Welcome everyone. It's such a pleasure to see you all here today for the ninth annual Future Law Conference. I wish I could be welcoming you in person to the law school's campus, but I know that despite the virtual format, you're in for an edifying day of discussions and opportunities for connection. Today's conference is a testament to the vibrant intellectual community we support here at Stanford Law School. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, we're able to bring together a host of thought leaders to discuss cutting edge issues in the area of law and technology. I'm enormously grateful to our panelists and conference organizers for bringing all of you here today. As in years past, today's event convenes thought leaders from the world of legal innovation, including scholars, technologists, policymakers, students, business people, and entrepreneurs. Today's discussion will focus on the way technology is changing the legal profession and the law itself, and the way these changes affect us all. Starting things off this morning, you'll hear from today's keynote speaker, renowned computer scientist, Alan Kay. You'll then have the opportunity to hear from panelists discussing a variety of topics, including computational antitrust, complex societies and the growth of law, computational innovation and immigration, and disposable neural nets. At the end of the day, the new co-directors of the Center on the Legal Profession will lead a discussion focused on some of the work of the late Professor Deborah Rohde, former director of the Center. I'm so grateful that all of you are taking the time to participate in today's conference and want to note my special thanks to the SLS staff, particularly our programs and IT groups who have assisted in putting together today's events. I also want to thank the generous sponsor of this event, AXA Insurance and Thomson Reuters. I'll let you get started and turn things over to Roland Vogel. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you, Jenny. Hello, everyone. My name is Roland Vogel. I'm the executive director of Codex, the Stanford Center for Legal Informatics. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to Codex Future Law 2021. The Future Law Conference is in its ninth year. And for us, it always represents an opportunity to bring together the Codex legal innovation community and share what we think are some of the most important new ideas, new trends, and questions facing our community. A quick overview of our program. We'll uh, start with a, a brief welcome message by Tom Kim, the Chief Legal Officer uh, and Company Secretary of Thomson Reuters. Uh, then at 9, 9.10, we'll have uh, Alan Kay uh, start us off with an opening keynote. And then uh, we'll take a, a short break at 9.40, 9.50, uh, Computable Contracts 2021. Then uh, at 11, we have a fireside chat on the use of computable contracts in the insurance industry. 11.30, we will reveal the winners of the first ever uh, Codex Prize. And then we'll take a short uh, lunch break from 11.45 to 12.30. And at 12.30, we'll kick off our Lex Talks, our Law Education and Experience Talks, which is a series of fast-paced talks by Codex Fellows and other thought leaders in the space on topics including explainability of AI, and law, computational antitrust, uh, diversity in legal tech, uh, complex society and the growth of law, legal APIs, links, uh, the links project. And then at two o'clock, a short break, and we'll have the second part of our next talks, uh, where we talk about legal innovation and immigration. Uh, we'll learn about uh, you know, the Corona Atlas project, or the, the takeaways from our Corona Atlas project, then uh, dis uh, disposable neuro uh, neural networks, and government relations management. Then we'll take a short break and at 3.20, uh, we'll have our closing panel uh, discussing the pioneering work of De Deborah Rohde and its lasting impact on the regulation of the legal profession through the lens of, uh, of legal innov innovation. An enormous thank you goes to our uh, generous sponsors, AXA Insurance and Thomson Reuters. Uh, big thank you to uh, our conference partner, the Stanford Center for the Legal Profession, and everyone who helped uh, pull together this conference, especially, of course, the Stanford uh, Law School Program Group. So with that, I will uh, introduce uh, Tom Kim. Uh, Tom is, um, is, a, is a seasoned lawyer and business executive who currently serves as the chief legal officer of Thomson Reuters. Uh, he, uh, prior to joining Thomson Reuters, he was a uh, a, a, a practitioner with uh, Baker McKenzie and Hancock, uh, Rother and Bunchoft in um, San Francisco. Through his career, he has led a number of uh, diversity uh, initiatives uh, and he was named you know, uh, 
to be one of the best lawyers in the 40 by the National Asian Pacific American Bar Association. And there's many more accomplishments I could mention, but um, I yeah, just want to also mention that he's, uh, he uh, received both his undergrad and his law degree from Stanford University. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you, Tom, and uh, we look forward to, to, uh, to your remarks. Over to you, Tom. Great, thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Thomas Kim, Chief Legal Officer and Company Secretary for Thomson Reuters. As a proud Stanford University and Stanford Law School alumnus, I thank Stanford Law School Dean Jenny Martinez and Roland Fogel, Executive Director of Codex, the Stanford Center for Legal Informatics, for the opportunity to address you today. As a member of the leadership team at Thomson Reuters, I'm delighted to welcome you to the 2021 Codex Future Law Conference. While the ongoing pandemic prevents us from being together in person this year, this year's virtual gathering will give us an opportunity to connect participants from around the world in a unique manner and seems a fitting way to engage on how technology and innovation continues to shape the practice of law. I look forward to what will be a very exciting and productive day with all of us. As I was preparing for today, I was thinking about two large scale forces that have driven rapid and significant change over the past year. First, there is the rapid acceleration of technology transformation necessitated by the move to virtual working environments in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The other force is the ongoing awakening across society to the longstanding problems of systemic injustice, including racism, misogyny, and violence. In the Future Law Conference today, we have a special opportunity to consider how these two different forces interplay with each other and how the tools, systems, and platforms that we design today will shape the society that we live in tomorrow and that our children will inherit from us in the near future. Will we recognize the risks, for example, of recruiting algorithms that end up advantaging men over women? Facial recognition technology that fails to discern between people of color? Or AI-enabled academic grading systems with inherent cultural biases? Or will we simply port over the failings of the past into our vision of the future? As a lawyer, as a technologist, as a person of color, and as a parent, I feel an obligation to ensure that we seize this opportunity before us now to not only accelerate technological innovation in the legal profession, but to use technology to make justice more accessible, to help identify and remove biases in our legal and commercial systems, and continue our collective journey to a society that is fairer for all. So what can we do? How do we continue technological innovation while staying true to the reasons why so many of us became interested in law and technology in the first place? There are three principal approaches I suggest, standardization, regulation, and principle-based innovation. First, standardization. We don't want an uneven global landscape. So as we move forward together, guidelines will need to be created. It will take private companies, research institutions, and the public sector working in concert to make this happen. How will we arrive at a common understanding while acknowledging that principles overlap? Will there be a different definition or explanation for a data scientist as opposed to a lawyer? Agreed and consistent global standards will help allow for better controls and risk mitigation across systems and platforms. A further step towards transparency is explainable AI, moving away from the black box nature of many AI systems to allow customers, consumers, and users to understand, trust, and make informed decisions using AI solutions. Second, regulation. Whether we like it or not, regulation is here and more is on its way. We are all familiar with GDPR and will watch the EU closely as they navigate the formal review of their coordinated plan on AI. But we can also see how different states here in the US are seeking to regulate the use of AI. In California, for instance, there's a bill that would regulate automated decision systems. The proposed legislation would require a business in California that provides a person, as defined, with a program or device that uses an automated decision system to take affirmative steps to ensure that there are processes in place to continually test for biases during the development and usage of the ADS. While many of us can see the value of testing for bias, hopefully we can strike a good balance that allows technology companies to develop AI without having to disclose proprietary information 
and doesn't conflict with authority already in place through other legislation. Finally, I would like to turn to principles-based innovation. While standardization is helpful and regulation is inevitable, given the need to not hamper innovation, organizations in the legal tech and reg tech space need to have their own principles which can guide their development and behavior in the marketplace. Industry must have its own ethical principles. At Thomson Reuters, we have a set of AI principles that we consider throughout the design, development, and deployment process. They are as follows. One, that Thomson Reuters will prioritize safety, security, and privacy throughout the design, development, and deployment of our AI products and services. Two, that Thomson Reuters will strive to maintain a human-centric approach and will strive to design, develop, and deploy AI products and services that treat people fairly. Three, that Thomson Reuters aims to design, develop, and deploy AI products and services that are reliable and that help empower people to make efficient, informed, and socially beneficial decisions. Four, that Thomson Reuters will maintain appropriate accountability measures for our AI products and services. And finally, five, that Thomson Reuters will implement practices intended to make the use of AI in our products and services explainable. Each organization needs its own set of principles that align ideally with its own mission and purpose of that organization. While the application of these principles may mature and evolve over time, if properly set, they can act as a North Star as we journey to a brighter future and a self-test to assess how we are doing along the way. So with those thoughts in mind, I wish you a successful day and encourage you to consider not only how tomorrow will be different than today, but also how it can be better and better for all of us. Thank you. And back to Roland. Thank you so much, Tom, for your, for your inspiring remarks. And it's, a, it's a really uh, wonderful to, to have you with us here today. 